Ladies and gentlemen, students, faculty, guests, and most importantly, our esteemed veterans, it is an honor and a privilege to stand before you today as we gather to pay tribute to those who have selflessly served our nation. At this recognition of veterans, we come together not only to express our gratitude, but also reflect on the sacrifices made by our brave men and women in uniform. As the principal of Washington County High School, I am deeply moved by this opportunity to address the assembly and to acknowledge the profound impact that our veterans have had on shaping the values and freedoms we hold dear. Winston Churchill once said, we make a living by what we get and we make a life by what we give. These words resonate powerfully with the spirit of our veterans and who have given so much of themselves in, in service to our country. Their dedication, resilience, unwavering commitment to protecting our freedoms embody the very essence of what makes our nation great. As we stand here today, let us remember that the liberties we enjoy are not a given, but a gift, a gift paid for by the sacrifices of those who have worn the uniform. In the classrooms and hallways of Washington County High School, we often talk about the importance of education, character, and community. Our veterans exemplify these values in the most profound way. They've not only defended our nation on the front lines, but have returned home to contribute to the very fabric of our society. Their stories are a testament to the strength of the human spirit and the power of unity. It is our duty to ensure that their sacrifices are never forgotten and their legacy continues to inspire future generations of students at our school. As we take a moment to reflect on the significance of our veterans, let us also consider the words of President John F. Kennedy, who said, as we express our gratitude, we must never forget the highest appreciation is not to utter words, but to live by them. It is not enough for us to simply thank our veterans. We must strive to embody the principles they fought for, freedom, justice, and the pursuit of a better future for all. Today, let us recommit ourselves to fostering an environment at the high school and in our community that instills these values in our students and teaching them to appreciate the sacrifices of those who came before them and encouraging them to be responsible, engaged citizens. In conclusion, as we honor, honor our veterans on this very special day, let us remember that the lessons they have taught us extend far beyond the battlefield. The stories are, their stories are a testament to the power of sacrifice, service, and the enduring spirit of America. Let us express our deepest gratitude for our veterans and strive to make our school, our community, our nation a place worthy of their sacrifices. Thank you. This time I'd like to invite Miss Sydney Marie to come forward for the invocation. All right, I'm gonna open us up in prayer. Bow your heads with me. Dear Heavenly Father, today we wanna to honor our veterans, worthy men and women who have given their best when they were called upon to serve and protect this amazing country. Lord, I pray that you will bless these veterans that are here with us today and the families of the veterans who are not. We respect them, thank them, we honor them, and we're proud of them. Pray that you will watch over these special people, bless them with peace and happiness. So as we gather here today, let us be thankful for the amazing women, the amazing people, and I pray that um, I pray for the men and women who you will call to serve this great nation. Amen. This time, I would like for everybody to please stand for the playing of the national anthem, a presentation of the colors, and the pledge to the flag.
pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. At this time, we would like to thank the dignitaries in the audience, veterans, their guests, and our elected officials. My name's Tracy Johnson, and I'd like to read the deceased veterans from Washington County. World War I, Alvin L. Bottom, Roy Kopenauer, James Ellery, Robert Sterling Ensign, George Lloyd Hayden Jr., John Peters, James Lloyd Parrott Jr., Amy Reed, John Manning Sims, John Spaulding, William A. Steele, Isidore Cheshire Woodward, Gilbert William Young, Billy Pettis, Billy Hagen, David Goatley, Forrest Albertus Carico, Thomas R. Parrott. World War II, Francis J. Alberry, Richard M. Badgett, Jr., James Wilson Barnett, Charles R. Byrd, Anthony J. Blanford, Joseph R. Carico, Herbert L. Cheatham, Charles W. Corbett, Ben M. Crouch, Earl W. Foley, James J. Gannon, Hunter M. Goatley, Jr., Thomas J. Goatley, Jr., Harry T. Harmon, Alvin H. Hinton, Charles D. Hood, Damon Hood, James T. Johnson, Joseph W. Keene, Thomas M. Kelly, Howard Boter, W. M. Taylor, Harry Kays Settles, Clarence O. Furman, Jr., Joe Davis, Jr., Billy Goatley, William Maurice Carrico, Charles Russell Carrico, James W. Logue, Thomas E. Long, Vernon M. Manning, Earl F. Mattingly, Hyatt McMichael, Thomas R. Medley, John T. Miller, John E. Parrott, Paul Peebler, James D. Robinson, Cecil Royalty, William A. Russell, William G. Sharp, Robert L. Sutton, Jr., Sterling D. Sweeney, Joseph M. Wheatley, Lee Wilkerson, Lloyd S. Yast, Daniel A. Kelly, Alva R. Lay, James Albert Walker, Harry H. Shoemaker, Kenneth Gabbert, Tom Duncan Reed, Bill McElroy, Robert Latimer, James Jake Herco, Joseph William Begley, Robert Rudolph, James Robert Newby, Stanley Keeling, John H. Kelly, Joseph Loken McElvoy, Bover Dial, Billy Goatley, Charles L. Waters, James B. No, Robert Ivo Carico, Aubrey Hayes, Gardner Jenkins, Otis Harden, Irvin Colvin, Ora Daniel Carroll, Jack McElroy, Clarence Click, Joseph A. Mattingly, Thomas F. Parrott, Charles Waters, Richard Harold Russell, Irvin Reynolds, Lewis Smith, Jesse William Arnold. Korea, Charles R. Baker, William A. Cecil, John L. Colvin, Eugene Dedman, Billy J. Kays, J. 
James W. Phillips, Donald Walker, John Lee Hall, Billy Mays, Thomas Francis Parrott, Joseph W. McDonald, Charles Edward McDonald, James Begley, Reverend James Heineson, J.W. Smith, James Jim Kent Harmon, Clay Smalley, Clarence Oliver Furman Jr., Elmo Hahn, Charlie Hahn, Morrison Onan, John Parrott, James Frederick McDonald, Bill Waters, Darnell Waters, Everett Lee Russell. Vietnam, Joseph Ronald McAvoy, Charles Michael Medley, Billy Foster, Ron White, Herschel Stone, Howard Trainer, Joe Shoemate, Edward Price Cornish, and other deceased veterans, Garland J. Mattingly, Evan Harden, Robert Smith, Lewis Smith, Joe L. Davis, Joseph Badgett O'Brien, Joe Maurice O'Brien, Billiard Smith Jr., William A. Smith, Harold Cooksey, Colonel Nicholas T. Perkins, Mike Hayden, Robert Carrico, Al Boone, Bill Medley, Lewis Smith, J.B. Manningly, L.W. Hale, Fred Willem, Charles A. Coulter, Dr. John Sacconi, Stacy Allen Luke. Iraq, Joshua Scott Williams, John Newby. Please, let's take a moment of silence to remember our veterans. Thank you. This time I'd like to invite Ms. Isabella Piasecki to give a speech entitled, sorry, Bigger Picture. All right, I need everyone to bear with me because my voice is not how it usually is, so. But don't worry, it's, everything's gonna get out. From the very beginning of my life, veterans and the military played a rather large role in shaping my future. My father was in the Air Force for 24 years, serving in various ways and maintaining many different roles. He started out as a meteorologist, working alongside the Army, and traveling all over the nation and world. A month after I was born, 2006, he was deployed overseas to Afghanistan for seven months. My parents lived and moved constantly, and once my brother and I came along, so did we. In many ways, I grew up with the military because of this. My brother and I were both born on a military base, Fort Bragg, now known as Fort Liberty, in North Carolina. Over the next se uh, seven years, we moved quite frequently. From North Carolina, we moved to Langley Air Force Base in Hampton, Virginia. A few years later, we moved to Springfield, Virginia, which is a city that is right outside of Washington, D.C. Uh, while we were in D.C., my dad worked at the Pentagon. We spent a fair chunk of my childhood in D.C. I was four when we moved there and almost eight when we left. The summer that we left D.C. was the most I had ever moved in a year. We moved twice in one summer. My father retired from the military after this, and then we moved right where we are now. Military life was truly interesting, even from my small point of view of being a military kid. While living on base, everyone we lived by and interacted with was affiliated in some way with the military. Life moved differently there than it did in the civilian world. It was not uncommon for your next door neighbor to deploy overseas 
or your coworker to receive a new assignment and suddenly move across the country. Every morning at 7 a.m., the Reveille was played to mark the beginning of the day, the retreat and national anthem played to mark the end of the workday, and taps played at 9 p.m. to start the quiet hours. I went to the Pentagon once when my father worked there, and just that alone could have a whole speech. Everything there was go, 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 with hundreds of different projects, departments, and data being worked on there. The diversity of people who work there and the importance of the work done at the Pentagon was truly incredible. Life was certainly different than it is now, but at the time, and for the millions of active duty members and veterans today, this is simply just how life can be when you're in the military. To say that veterans are important is truly an understatement. My intent for including my very small anecdote of memories of the military is not just to describe how the military looks from the eyes of a child, but to truly emphasize the magnitude of the sacrifices that veterans make. I could go on and on about all the physical and obvious sacrifices that veterans have made. Just open any history book and you'll find proof of the impact veterans have had in shaping this country. The picture is simply much bigger than this. Military life is sacrificing a typical calm life for a life dependent on your next assignment, chosen by what the world is currently demanding. It is being across the nation instead of being across the room from your children and family. It is meeting new people who you didn't expect to be friend and then never seeing them again after you move. Many veterans have given their lives to our nation and yet are still sitting here with us today, alive and breathing. I again share this with you all today to not sway opinions or create negative feelings, but simply to just share my small piece in the puzzle and present the bigger picture. Humankind has a dangerous tendency to only listen to what we want to hear and push aside everything that makes us uncomfortable. It is one thing to be uneducated and another to simply be ignorant. After today, everyone in this room should now have a better understanding of how veterans are absolutely indispensable for America's safety and freedom. I often struggle with how to show my appreciation to veterans. How can a simple thank you for your service compare to what veterans have endured for my freedom? We can thank veterans all day, every day for their service, but I believe that we can express our gratitude in ways more than this. Simply respect veterans, respect one another, actively seek knowledge about our nation's past. Stop with this ignorance is bliss attitude. Veterans have given us the gift of a free and diverse nation. Let us not take this gift for granted. Vote, run for government office, protest for a cause you believe worthy. These brave men and women have given us a free voice. Let us now use this voice for the betterment of our nation and world. And now the best way I can think to end this speech is with thanks and a quote. Thank you to all veterans. Whether your service consisted of two years or 20 years, it is a sacrifice that words cannot express. Thank you for serving always. Thank you, military spouses. Your sacrifices are often overlooked, but no less important. Thank you, military children. You have had to grow up with these sacrifices. Abraham Lincoln quotes, a nation that does not honor its heroes will not long endure. Let us never stop honoring our veterans nor ever let what they sacrificed for us go to waste. Thank you. And now if you would turn your attention to the Washington County High School Choir with their rendition of America the Beautiful.
Have you ever noticed how the Honor Guard pays meticulous attention to correctly folding the American flag 13 times? You probably thought it was to symbolize the original 13 colonies. However, each of the 13 folds holds a symbolic meaning to our nation's history. The first fold of our flag is the symbol of life. The second fold is a symbol of our belief in eternal life. The third fold is made in honor and remembrance of the veterans departing our ranks who gave a portion of their lives for the defense of our country to attain peace throughout the world. The fourth fold represents our weaker nature, for as American citizens trusting in God, it is to him we turn in times of peace as well as in time of war for his divine guidance. The fifth fold is a tribute to our country, from the words of Stephen Decor, our country, in dealing with other countries, may she always be right, but it is still our country, right or wrong. The sixth fold is for where our hearts lie. It is with our hearts that we pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. The seventh fold is a tribute to our armed forces, for it is through the armed forces that we protect our country and our flag against all our enemies, whether they be found within or without the boundaries of our republic. The eighth fold is a tribute to the one who entered into the valley of the shadow of death that we might see the light of day. The ninth fold is a tribute to womanhood and mothers, for it has been through their faith their love, loyalty, and devotion that the character of the men and women who have made this country great has been molded. The tenth fold is a tribute to the Father, for he too has given his sons and daughters for defense of our country since they were first born. The eleventh fold represents the lower portion of the seal of King David and King Solomon and glorifies in the Hebrews' eyes the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. The twelfth fold represents an emblem of eternity and glorifies, in the Christian eyes, God the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. The thirteenth fold, or when the flag is completely folded, the stars are uppermost reminding us of our nation's motto, In God We Trust. After the flag is completely folded and tucked in, it takes on the appearance of a cocked hat, ever reminding us of the soldiers who served under General George Washington and the sailors and Marines who served under Captain John Paul Jones, who were followed by their comrades and shipmates in the armed forces of the United States, preserving for us the rights, privileges, and freedoms we enjoy today. This time we'd like to recognize any and all veterans who are present. Um, I'd ask that you please hold a pause till the end. Um, as you hear your name, if you are able, you please stand. Um, James Clark, Terry Boblett, um, Billy Russell, Joe Piasecki, um, Bobby Brady, Carl Gabbert, Dennis Esper, um, John Robert, Thomas Smith, Stephen Woodson, Tim Strait, Michael Gilpin, David Tingle, John Higdon, Michael Davis, Jason Webb, Susan Mudd, Terry Young, Robert Taylor, um, Kirby Reams, Steve Jones, Brad Steiner, Seth Drum, John Timmons, and any other veterans whose name was not listed. This time, if you draw me in a round of applause, thanking our veterans for their service.
Thank you. And now I'd like to introduce the two-time state champion Washington County Band. Um, any veterans, if you are able, I'd ask that you stand as your branch's theme anthem is played. We are here today to honor all those who have fought to protect this country we love. We thank all service members here today and those who couldn't be with us that have served in making us safe and free. Students in art and history classes created art about what Veterans Day means to them. Some shared that they had family members they thought of when they thought about the day. Others said that they had thought of symbols of freedom and they thought about the sacrifice made for them. You can see a visual representation in the art they have created as it is displayed around the gym and school. These students and everyone here want to thank those service members today. We sincerely hope you know how important each one of you veterans are for making this country free. Thank you. This time it's a privilege to introduce this year's guest speaker, retired Colonel Robert Sketch, as I read the uh, some biographical information so that you can become more familiar with him. Colonel Sketch, a native of, Columbia, of Covington, Kentucky, enlisted January 1993 and received his commission in September 1998 through the Officer Candidate School at Fort Benning, Georgia. Colonel Sketch holds a Bachelor of Science in, in Psychology a Master of Military Operational Art and Science, a Master of National Security and Strategic Studies. His military education includes the Adjutant General uh, Officer Basic and Advanced Courses. He graduated from the United States Air Force Command and Staff College and the United States Navy College of Naval Warfare. Colonel Sketch most recently served as Deputy Adjutant General of the United States Army. He has been stationed at numerous military bases in the United States as well as in foreign countries. His combat deployments include Operation Restore Hope, Mogadishu, Somalia, and numerous tours to Afghanistan and Iraq. Contingency operations include Operation Sea Signal, Guantanamo Bay, Cuba, and others in the Middle East. Colonel Sketch has received a multitude of honors and awards for his valiant service and dedication to his country. He and his wife, Carla, have been married for 27 years and have a daughter, Ashley, and a son, Rob. Please join me in welcoming this year's guest speaker, retired Colonel Robert Sketch. So <clears throat> I was just thinking that 
If there's anybody on this planet that doesn't think we live in an exceptional country, the best country on the planet, they need to just come here and watch the ceremony that you put on here in Washington County. This is just amazing. Um, first, thanks to Mr. Garrett for inviting me to be here today. Um, I'm told this is the 30th uh, ceremony that we've done uh, honoring veterans, which is remarkable. And he's been doing it on or about 24 years. So please, a big round of applause for Mr. Garrett. Also, it doesn't go lost on me, and I'm sure everyone else, that the remarkable uh, talent, time, and effort put in by the color guard, the band, the choir, um, the folks that did the Pledge of Allegiance, um, the flag folding, all of that, it is truly world class and very classy. So thank you so much for doing that. I appreciate it. A round of applause for them. And that bigger picture perspective speech almost makes me uh, unqualified to be standing here behind this podium because that was so well put and, and so thought out. And I, I just could not have said it better. So thank you so much uh, for doing that as well. Um, so thank you. Go ahead. The one thing I did notice, though, that uh, she said that uh, retreat irreverently was played at 7 a.m. That must have been Air Force because in the Army it's earlier. Uh, okay. Hey, so when I think of Veterans Day, um, I try to put it in perspective. And so I just want to share with you very briefly what I think about when I think of Veterans Day. I think first that we have remarkable people out there that raise their right hand and take an oath. And that oath is to protect and defend our Constitution, our way of life, our ability to have these type of ceremonies, to have commanders such as yourself attend a great school like this and love the ability to have the freedoms we have. They do that not for anything other than the selfless service and character that they have and the love they have for their families and who they leave behind. There's, they're not going to get rich from it. They're not going to get big accolades. They don't do it for the awards. They do it because they love their country. And so when you think about 330 million Americans that live in this country and less than half percent make that commitment, I still have a hard time putting that in perspective. So what I did is I thought about Washington County. And as you all know, the first county appointed by the state legislature in 1792 uh, kind of makes me a little envious that I didn't get to come here. I was Kenton County. But Washington County has 504 by the last consensus veterans that live here. So we think about how many we have in this gymnasium today, which I would say is about 500. That's how many veterans that we have in this county that raise their right hand to make that commitment. And it is just such a true honor and pleasure to be uh, around you. And those that are here today, I can't thank you enough in the bottom of my heart for all the sacrifices you and your families went through um, from the service that you provided long before I even thought about serving. And it's the shoulders of giants like you that allowed me to do what I did. And I am very humbled for that. So thank you. Round of applause for our veterans here. So I, I told Mr. Garrett I would keep my remarks short no matter, no matter how long it takes. So uh, two more quick points. Um, very briefly, my experience, you know, 30 years, very privileged and honored to have served uh, our country. And all the cool things I got to do, whether it's jumping out of airplanes, out of helicopters, going on humanitarian missions around the world, uh, representing our country if we needed to fight somebody who was dumb enough not to be deterred, uh, to mess with us. What really took away from my time, the one thing was the people who served and did it for each other. They didn't do it for anything other than that. The other thing is the diversity we have in our military brings us strength. And I had the pleasure and honor to be part of a program that opened up combat arms roles to women. And I was able to build the program that recruited the first female fighter helicopter pilot, the 160th Special Ops Aviation Regiment down at Fort Campbell, Kentucky, 
And I can tell you that most male aviators will tell you that the women that we have today in Top Gun fighting uh, in today's fights are incredible pilots and, and most of the time better than the men counterparts. But um, those, those types of stories and diversity that we have and diversity of thought is what makes us strong. So for what it's worth, out of my 30 years, that's what I walk away from, and I hope that you know, we continue to celebrate that. Um, so really, uh, the last point I wanted to make is to divert a little bit of this veteran appreciation for a moment, because veterans aren't made by themselves. Veterans don't magically appear. They don't magically want to raise their right hand. They don't magically want to selflessly serve and sacrifice at the levels that they do. They are born and raised in communities that instill that character and selfless spirit. And for me, it was the teachers. And I know some of the commander students may not want to hear that, but we have teachers out there that, for me, instilled in me the desire to serve and the desire to reach my potential. And as I got into the service, I also got to be around teachers that taught me how to think differently that it's not always about fighting a war, it's about how do you prevent war? How do you deter war? And if deterrence fails, we win in combat. But it takes the teachers and the committed people who build those special folks that raise their right hand that deserve a round of applause as well. So for all the teachers here and those that instill that spirit that you have here in Washington County, which is so special, please give them a round of applause. The last thing I want to say is I want to live in Washington County now. I, I, I'm going to go home and tell my wife, hey, it's time to pick up. Louisville's not that great. It's, it's kind of cool, but not as cool as this place. I tell you, this, this is so special. What you've got going on here is incredibly special. I know when I was in the ninth grade through 12th grade, I may not have uh, appreciated as much as I should have, but I got to tell you, commanders out there, you guys are awesome. The school's awesome. The community's awesome. Be proud of what you got, and thanks again for me, allowing me to be a small part of this. Thank you very much. During World War I, much of the fighting took place in Western Europe. The Belgian Flanders, the northernmost point of the Western Front during the First World War, became one of the most devastated regions in the battlefield. The war turned the beautiful countryside into a field of mud where nothing could grow. But poppy flowers sprouted on the land of thousands of dead men. In early May 1915, a Canadian doctor and poet, Lieutenant Colonel John McRae, who recently lost a friend and a fellow lieutenant in the war, witnessed the sight of the bright red poppies flourishing in an unlikely place. The vision inspired him to write a poem called In Flanders Fields, which became famous. The poem goes as follows. In Flanders fields, the poppies glow between the crosses row on row that mark our place in the sky, the larks still bravely singing fly. Scarce heard amid the guns below. We are the dead short days ago. We lived, felt dawn, saw sunset glow. We loved and were loved, and now we lie in Flanders fields. Take up our quarrel with the foe. To you from failing hands we throw. The torch be yours to hold it high. If ye break faith with us who die, we shall not sleep though poppies grow in Flanders fields. This time I would like to, uh, for the Marion County JROTC to come forward as they present the POW MIA ceremony.
Ladies and gentlemen, honored guests, the Marion County High School Junior Reserve Officer Training Corps Honor Guard, under the command of Cadet Caitlin McCroskey, will now present the Prisoner of War Missing in Action Ceremony. The other members of the Honor Guard are Cadet Joseph Morris, Cadet Nathaniel Day, Cadet Michaela Morris, Cadet Jennifer Meskowski, and I am Cadet Isabella Woodson. I have been given the honor and privilege on introducing and acknowledging this table, representing and paying tribute to all the prisoners of war missing in action and killed in action from all American involvement in World War I, World War II, Korea, Vietnam, Grenada, Panama, the Persian Gulf, Operation Enduring Freedom, Operation Iraqi Freedom, and many more. Many of you have looked at this table and wondered. Let me explain. This table, set for five, symbolizes the frailty of the prisoners against their oppressors. Remember, the tablecloth is white, symbolizing the purity of the country's call to arms. Remember, the single lit candle displayed in the center of the table is symbolic of the families and loved ones who kept the faith, waiting for the return of those dear to them. Remember, the red ribbon tied so prominently on the candle is reminiscent of the red ribbon worn on lapels and breasts of many of thousands who bear witness to their unyielding determination to demand a proper accounting of our missing and the return of all the Americans left on foreign soil. Remember, the lemon on the bread plate reminds us of their bitter fate. Remember, there is salt on the bread plates, symbolic of the tears of the families as they still wait for their loved ones to return. Remember, the glasses are inverted. They cannot toast with us this evening. Remember, the chairs are empty. They are not here. Remember, all of you who have served with them and called them brothers and sisters, who depended upon their might and aid, remember them, for surely they have not forgotten you. The story must be told of valor and bold. So let them write it down in history. A young soldier cries for his comrades who died, fighting for a cause to save the peace. Nobody's seen or heard 
This time, please stand for the playing of taps. Thank you, please be seated. At this time, could we get a round of applause for everyone that put on the program today? What a wonderful way to honor our veterans. And at this time, could everyone please stand? And if we'd have a just round of applause, a show our appreciation to our veterans for joining us today again. Thank you so much. Thank you. At this, uh, Veterans and guests, we will have a reception for you in the library, so if you all will stay with us for uh, a little while longer, we so appreciate your presence uh, today, and uh, we will go to the uh, library in just a minute. 
Uh, at this time, uh, this concludes our program. Uh, all upstairs classrooms, all uh, during the third period, I'm sorry if you could return to your classes, all upstairs classrooms, please go ahead and be dismissed.